You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was free, heartbreaker. And we had the flaming groovies, teenage head. And we're here with Theodore Richards. How Hello, are, sir. How are you? I'm doing all right. Thank you so much for having me. Do you live here? I don't. I come uh, at least three times a year. My mom had a really wonderful experience in her modeling days, like 22, 23, in Hermosa Beach, where she her best friend still lives, and I go and stay out there when I come here. Yeah, I, I do. I love Los Angeles. It's just uh, I am a true blue New Yorker. Oh, um, you live in New York? Yeah, that's home. In Manhattan? Yeah, in Manhattan. I'm down um, in, uh, I say Soho, but this girl's like, uh-uh, you live in Lolita. So I'm like, okay, North and Little Italy, that's home. Yeah. And what's the weather like there? Did you, did you just is, come out? If, if I'm allowed to swear. No. No. <laughs> no it is friggin' cold. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, we left and it was 40. But when I arrived uh, after uh, New Year's, I think it was something like 12 degrees, maybe eight. Uh, it was brutal. Yeah. I got carried, uh, I was trying to, because I went to a bar later on that evening when we landed, and this German, wasted German guy gave me a piggyback ride <laughs> for at least three blocks to get to where we needed to go because of ice everywhere and I was gonna wear the wrong oh. shoes, as a girl does. You, you got a book? Gus and me. I did. I had a. Uh, it was a fantastic uh, opportunity Dad gave to me. Oh, gosh, I want to say it's almost five years ago, um, and he. You know, I love. I was illustrating doodles. Uh, I never went to school to study art, but this opportunity came from these two writers who read life, and they totally focused on the relationship that Dad had with his grandfather, who I'm slightly named after, Augustus Theodore Dupree. Oh, uh, okay. That's what Augustus means. Yeah, Augustus. And he was the, uh, he would uh, take Dad around to these, like, the back side of the room, because he used to build violins and guitars, and Dad used to watch all of the, the guys build these instruments with all the glue and the tapping, and, the, and he just was completely affected. Yeah. And that was uh, the reason he fell in love with guitar because the guy kept it, his his grandfather kept it above the mantle. And it was like, not until you can touch it can you play it. Mm. And my dad kept on trying to reach, kept on trying to reach. And one day he was like, here you go, son. You, you play, and when you can play the Malaguena, you can play anything. Have you actually, have you read the book? Because, you know, dad no. reads it to you on CD. Oh, yeah, he, he did the audio. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty darn cute. <laughs> he did the audio part of it for his own book as well, didn't he? Not all of I, it. Not all of it. There was Johnny, Johnny Depp. Depp. Yeah. Who yeah. was the other bloke? Uh, the one who wrote it? No, who did some of the audio too. Oh God, that's a really good question. Did it, he? Would he work for your dad? Yeah. Was he like a roadie or something? Maybe it was. Yeah, I'm trying to think about who the other voice was. That's a. You know, I'm gonna have to go back and. That was our work. It I, I, was that book took a while, and James Fox, who was writing it with Dad, and you know, I, it was Dad's just an incredible. You know, he's got a lot of great stories. And, I'm sure he does. But I actually haven't read it all the way through. You know, when he goes into the women part, I'm like, my mom's the only one for you, and and they are. They really they're they're super in love, and it's kind of they've awesome been together to a long time. Thirty four right? years. Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, it is. It's awesome. You got any? You got any sisters from the same? I do. Well, I, me and uh, my mom from uh, from Patty, uh, my baby sister who's sixteen months younger than me, Irish twins, Alexandra. Yeah, and she's actually a DJ. She yeah. has one of the best reggae collections I've reggae. ever. Reggae. Yeah, 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 that's her specialty. But she loves it all. You don't, you don't have any? Uh, do you have the gene to want to play music? I love singing. Yeah. I do. I love to sing. I can do a little bit of piano, but um, my dream is to be like a land stretch at the Carlisle, laying across a piano and singing old show tunes. Yeah, like cocktail style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Loungy bits. Yeah. Uh, you know, I also love my Disney. I, I was recently singing uh, Peggy Lee, uh, He's a Tramp, with my sister. Uh, I had a great time doing that. You know, it's just, I don't know. Uh, but I also feel like if I did sing to an audience, I'd be like Jim Morrison with my back to the crowd. You're too shy. I can be. It's you know. I can be a a bit of both. I can be the extrovert and the introvert. Yeah. So what do you do? What's your day like? Your, your normal day in normal New York. Normal day is. You get up early. Depending on what happened the night before, yeah. I am. Uh, yeah, I do. I I'm like. Uh, 
Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes it depends. You know, I really do enjoy the mornings because I feel like if you, sleep, especially in winter time, if you sleep all day, you get so guilty. It gets so dark. You don't get anything done. It can be depressing. It makes yeah. you blue. So I really do try to you know, fill up my day. Right now, I'm doing this show on Sirius Radio that's been keeping me rather busy. And you do that once a month, right? It is. It's once a month. You do this every day, right? Five days a week. Five yeah. days a week. Well, how is that? That's because that sounds intense to me. Because I mean, how long is your show? An hour. An hour. Yeah, this is yeah. two hours. Uh, awesome. It's a nightmare. I bet it's a. I bet it's loads of fun. Uh oh, she was gonna swear. I know. I've got a really bad. I'm sorry. I'm like a sailor sometimes. That's okay. Let's play some music. Let's play a song from your dad. Uh, We're gonna play. Uh, my heart's filled with joy. Make no mistake, we're here with Theodore Richards. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. You're listening to Jonesy's Jukebox on KLOS. That was uh, the Rolling Stones before they make me run. Mm -hmm. And before that was Keith Richards. Make no mistake. With Sarah Dash. Who is she? That she used to sing back up with Dad. Um, so she's a backing singer? Yeah, she's a backup singer. Uh, she used to work a lot with Lisa Fisher, who I actually interviewed on my serious show. She was one of my first guests. Yeah. You're listening to a Theodore Richards voice, if you're wondering. Hello, hello, hello. If you're just tuning in. And uh, so you must have been... When was you born? 85. 85, so... Was you always on the road with your dad when, you, was, was, was yeah, you, when it, you was a kid? Well, yeah, actually. So I came out of the womb around Steel Wheels time. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, the Stones kind of took a serious break. You know, there was some stuff that went down where I think Mick wanted to go on his own. And dad was like, if you're going to do that, I'm going to do the expensive winos. Yeah. And so then I got to be around for a lot of that, which yeah. was really special. And... Then, gosh, I guess as the time went on and they recreated their relationship and wanted to tour again, then um, is it, what is this, was it, Voodoo, was it Voodoo Lounge after Steel Wheels? Uh, yeah, exactly. I've got to get my, I wish I, that I was the best Rolling Stone fan and knew every word, but I, I don't, you know, I love them completely, but I, I'm, they have a large repertoire of music that yeah. I, I can't get through entirely. He's pretty private, your dad, isn't he? Absolutely. You never hear him about him. Mm-mm. Even yeah. even though there's cameras everywhere. Yeah, no, he's pretty good about staying out. So, you know, it's not his favorite thing. Actually, uh, three years ago, he did uh, walk down Fifth Avenue from his old apartment uh, that my sister's staying in now on the Upper East Side. And he walked from 73rd down to Cipriani's, right, in, right next to the Plaza Hotel. Yeah. Or in front, and he was so happy. And, you know, he was like, you know, I don't get to do this anymore. You know, it's it, it gets a little... You know, the fact that he has to, you know, have, have some sort of disguise or, you know, you go out to dinner. We took him out to dinner for his birthday and there were people taking pictures of him at the birthday cake. And I get really protective and I'm like, do you know this is a family moment? Yeah, yeah. Just leave it out. Yeah, yeah. You should wear a mask. <laughs> We've created a few mustaches. <laughs> um, what you got there, Shovel? I just, that's the song you have queued up. Oh, okay. Um, so, uh, do you remember Ronnie Wood? Yeah, he's my godfather. Oh, is he? Yeah, man. I, um, I got a, fu there's a funny story in my book. I was obsessed with the faces. Oh, how could you not be there? Rod like Stewart, all of it. Yeah, like around 70, 72. And I used to, I used to stalk Ronnie Wood when he used to live up at the, in Richmond at the top of the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You that's know? exactly because I spent time, you know, that's where uh, the Mick and Jerry lived for the longest time up on <laughs> Richmond Hill. Well, what when him and Joe were together. Yeah. yeah. Well, what happened was once I was up there and, I, and I, 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 d I didn't know what guest houses were. I was just an idiot from a council f estate, you know. So I, I jumped over the wall down the bottom and stole a TV and a jet. <laughs> And a jacket, a coat, a full length coat. And it turned out the coat was your dad's. Amazing, amazing. Was it like Granny takes a trip step? It was stuff? kind of a herringbone. Oh, beautiful. Long Very coat. nice. Good steel. I just thought it was Ronnie Woods. I didn't, I didn't no, know. No, you were like, I just want anything Ronnie's anything. that he's touched. And it was a little portable TV, you know, the one with a coat hanger in the top. <laughs> it's amazing. So I've. Uh, 
five finger just carrying Ronnie's apartment. I love yeah, it. <laughs> I, and I was a, it, I, I stole it because not to get away with something. It's just I was just a massive fan. You just loved Ronnie. You loved the faces. Faces, yeah. So uh, <clears throat> great story. I guess I owe your dad an amends. <laughs> can, can you tell him? Because I don't know how to reach him. I will. I will. Because you know, dad doesn't have a cell phone, so I will, I will definitely. He don't have a cell phone. Oh no, no, no! It was faxes all the way for the longest time. Wow. Wow. Um, so, what's uh, what's on uh, what's on the horizon for you? Do you do what else do you do? Well, actually, I'm uh, right now. I'm in talks with this uh, young lady from New York who would love to use my illustrations for her story, and perhaps we would be. She was saying like, let's send it to the New Yorker and the New York Times, and I'm like, my art and these kind of like prestigious ma like newspapers and magazines. Um, I'm, I'm just I'm saying yes to to everything that's going to keep this momentum going because yeah. I took a serious break from life for a while. Yeah? Yeah. Why? Uh, uh, there was some stuff, you know, that hit me hard, bad relationships in my 20s, you know, and I became a hermit for like several years. It's good. I like being a hermit, personally. Yeah. It's nice, you know, you actually find like, if, I find that if you can be good alone, you can be good anywhere. Yeah, some people can't be alone. Though. No, 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 no. I've met those people and it's terrifying. Yeah. I'm the opposite. I can't be with people. I understand that completely. I actually have a problem with, and since I was a kid, it was with boundaries, you know, like sleepovers and things like that. All, all the girlfriends would come over and I'd be like, Mom, I'm, you know, I'm having so much fun, so much fun. And then I would just, wouldn't be able to ask for my alone time. I couldn't, Yeah. like, I couldn't ask for it. Yeah. And it's so important to know your your space know your boundaries be aware of your body and how you feel because you know i could go 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 but then i would um, reward myself with isolation yeah and there's a healthy way to do that yeah but you have to understand why are you isolating and yeah. and when is there healthy alone time mm -hmm. so that's something that i'm learning yeah i guess i'm not healthy then well i guess i i have to socialize because i have this job it's important no, you know. no human connection and we're losing it all the time you know so this days. is very special yeah but, um, I mean, left to my own device, I would literally just lock the door, watch TV, eat cream pies. Mm, cream pies. Oh, delicious. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> Don't. And uh, that would be it. And I would go down this hole, this spiral. And, and even though I wanted to do it, it was, it's probably the worst thing I should be doing. Mm -hmm. I have to force myself to get out and, you know, at least you're aware of that, and that yeah, mm -hmm. that's very important. Yeah, I've that's been, therapy up in here. I like it. Yeah, no, I've been, I've done a lot of therapy, and uh, you know, I've I'm, been, I'm learning how I've just built a relationship with the uh, with the therapist in the last two years, and um, it's it's great. It's just very. I was brought up with the you know mentality and a really great support system with my family that I never needed to go to anybody and then you realize that you know your, your mom may be your best friend your dad's the best friend but there's only so much that you can talk about yeah. with family about family you gotta without... put your own head on the bed at night mm -hmm. my you know big head I mean? oh yeah let's talk about that <laughs> well i think that we just shrink you know like the i don't head know, shrinks. i don't know if the head shrinks but i think everything else goes i'm not i wonder if your skull can actually get smaller i mean unless you've done crazy things to your brain maybe that's why well they do in in some of them funny places they shrink skulls don't they them oh the voodoo oh down in haiti or something in right? them weird kind of cannibal places yeah the congo they can shrink some heads maybe i should go down there <laughs> go, go and get, get, go and get some can you take two inches off it please <laughs> <laughs> you have to get in a pot are you a hat man yeah Okay. Seven five apes is the size of my barnet. My mom's got a big head, so I'm going to ask. I think she's about seven, and sometimes I think that I have her head. So nothing. We, you, your head, I'm, a, I'm a little bit tinier. Yeah, you don't have a big head. No, I wonder what's going on in there. Maybe, maybe I want a big head. <laughs> <laughs> Someone texted me and said uh, that a lot of actors have big heads. I wonder what, because That's they true. have to, you know, because they have to become so many other people. Well, I think on film, there's something about 
No, uh, th- no, there is a truth to that, right? There's um, uh, w- what's the whole other thing is that you look bigger on screen, like a uh, Tom Cruise, who's such a shorty. Yeah, he actually looks great on on screen. Yeah, because it kind of fits perfectly. But my uncle Al um, is like he's wanted to be an actor for forever, and he's he he does horses and stunts and all these things. Right. It was a great thing. But he was in Wayne's World too, one of the only movies that he ever got. And he plays um, the actor that gets taken off stage because Mike Myers says we need a better actor, yeah. and then Charlton Heston comes oh, out. Oh yeah. And, and I was like, oh, Uncle Al, I love you so much. And he is. He's got these bright blue eyes. He's super dreamy. But, you know, they wanted Charlton Heston. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've definitely got a big head, so maybe I should be an actor. Well, I've done it, a bit of acting. Really? And do you enjoy it? Because mm. that's why I like the radio, because I'm very aware of when there's a camera on me. Yeah. No, I've got no problem with being a camera. I've just got a problem remembering lines. Mm, like Marilyn Monroe? I'm not good at me- memory lines. Should we play some music? Yeah. What are you going to do next? Are you going to do the Noisettes? Yeah, we are. <gasps> Jonesy's Jukebox, Carlo S, the Noisettes. What's it called? Never Forget You. The Jonesy's Jukebox, Carlo S. And my guest, Theodore Richards. That was Johnny Funders, Daddy Rolling Stone. And before that was your... Pick. Yeah, yeah, the noisettes. The noisettes. Never forget you. Um, what else is going on, love? I'm, oh, I'm knackered, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah, well, you said that you're not feeling under the weather, so let's we'll wrap this up. I'm drawing some illustrations. I'm constantly drawing, and hopefully one day can do my own little uh, art book myself. But then, um, did you go to school in England? I did not actually. The longest that I've ever lived in England uh, was three months, mm-hmm. uh, and I have a lot. You know, uh, Dad and Anita have Marlon and Angela, and they have their their children over there. And Dad still has the house Redlands, and they all live within like this little fifteen minute radius of the house out there down in West Sussex. Yeah, and it's uh, really special, but I don't get to see them as often as I would like. So you went to school in Manhattan? No, no. I was born in, Man- in Manhattan. Uh, my mom and dad were like, we don't want to raise our kids in the city. So I actually um, was brought up in Connecticut. What, like a private school? No, no. Local, pu- local public school was super close to the house. Did you learn anything in there? I hated school so yeah. much. I was much better when dad took me uh, and mom. Uh, we went with a lovely woman named Wendy first night. I rest in peace. Uh, she was my tutor. And I actually came back and from being 10 years old on the Voodoo Lounge store going around the world and then came back into school smarter for two years. And then by sixth grade, I got my first D and it was downhill from there. <laughs> uh, a D, D, D. A uh, D, you know, they, how we grade in, uh, in America. Oh, a D. A, a D, yeah, like D- a D, D minus. D for dunce. D- yeah, you got one of those, yes, yes, that happened to me. I think I was, yeah. I think I was right, right close to you too. I didn't learn a thing at school. No, I, there, I just was very distracted and, yeah. and teachers were really, um, boring. Yeah. Even, I love history. I love art. Yeah. I love science. And if I had teachers that were willing to work with me or, you know, and I was, you know, I was distracted. I was drawing all the time, and, yeah. you know, because they were boring. Yeah. No, <laughs> but, I get it. You know, the stuff that I do, you know, now I get it through my, through reading, uh, reading books and talking with friends. And that's where I get my, yeah. you know, I have more, I've got a little bit more street smarts these days. Yeah. Well, thanks for coming by. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure to meet you. Nice Shut to meet up. you. Hope you feel better. Thank you, love. We're going to visit the Duke, and we'll be back in a little bit.